The 6.5 is on the road here at the Snapdragon Summit 2024 here in amazing Maui. It's been an incredible event. We've seen innovations on mobile. We've seen innovations on automotive. We got updates on PC. Daniel, it's been a great event, right? Yeah, Pat, this is one of those places that you just never mind coming. The journey can be sometimes arduous, but when you get here, you just step outside, you feel the air, you feel the energy. And of course, after gosh, going near on a, near a decade of attending these events for Snapdragon Summit. It's also been great to see the innovation. You know, you and I have covered so deeply the business, the innovation, the diversification. That's I right. I can't talk enough about how it used to be about mobile, mobile, mobile. And now you're seeing the automotive, the PC, the company has changed so much and it's for the good. Yeah. And, and all that leverage of intellectual property, leverage of designs uh, really sends, I think, a great message to investors too. So let's bring in Cristiano Amont, great, great to see you again. Welcome back to the 6.5. Very happy to be here talking to both of you. Thank you for coming to Maui for the Snapdragon Summit. Mm -hmm. I know both of you come for the content, not for the location. Absolutely not. And uh, But uh, look, it's uh, it's been great so far. As you said, it's almost a decade and uh, really happy to have both of you here. Yeah, Thank yeah you. it is great. You don't exactly have to drag people out. Having said that, we all travel quite a bit. So this is one of those destinations where you land and you're like, I'm glad I'm here. Um, Cristiano, the last four months have been a pretty exciting time at, at, at Qualcomm. I mean, it's always exciting, right? But the last four months since you commercialized X Elite, you know, Snapdragon, your, your PC series, which is bringing new competition. It's sort of changing the entire landscape of the industry. Love for you to just kind of share a little bit about kind of how that journey has been of really yeah. going to market. There seems to be a lot of enthusiasm. Yes, like one thing, um, I'm personally very happy about it. I think um, uh, hopefully you could see the energy in the room. I think there's a, there's a lot of momentum at Qualcomm. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of positive momentum. I think uh, I even heard from uh, uh, from one of our partners uh, that actually said to me, you know, I've been thinking Snapdragon brand. It's like very sexy. A Snapdragon is a, a, there's so many things happening with Snapdragon. I say, well, that's good. I think we see the energy, but I'll answer the question in, in one way is we have, you know, now that we got to this point, I think, you know, we have been talking uh, about this for a while. The mission that we have been, we're going to change this company. Qualcomm is a company that always reinvented itself. And we said, we're going to go from, a communications company into a connected processor company for uh, for the transition to artificial intelligence, and we're going to go to other markets. and And I think the mission that we had is, if we go to a different market, we need to build the leading platform. Period. That's what we did with Alto, and if we continue to do that with the show with the new uh, product we announced, and that's what we did with PC. and And I think we're excited to see how much I think we're getting recognition, including from our partners. Uh, you know, hopefully you saw the number of partners at the show about, you know, we're doing something that is actually bringing a lot of excitement to, um, to the PC industry. Competition about CPU is good. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good conversation to have. Uh, it's driving a lot of the, um, of consumers, the tech enthusiasts, to talk about the platform. And uh, I think we just did that at the show. We did the same thing again, restoring leadership in Android. And uh, we're gonna continue doing that. We're on a roll. Yeah, observing the journey was just so special uh, for me and, and my company. I've been in and around PCs going on 35 years. And I wrote something along the lines of, this was the most amount of platforms and support that I had ever seen. I know you weren't new to the PC market, but a brand new architecture. And typically people sit on the sidelines, right? And then we saw the competitive response. Uh, and the, just to be blunt, they had to tear up their roadmaps and start over uh, to respond to what you had brought out. And even as recently, Dan and I were at Lenovo Tech World, uh, you you know, and saw a lot of mud being uh, slung around there. I just let me get your take on the competitive environment. Look, I, 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 I think I'm going to answer your question by first saying competition is a great thing, right? Competition is a great thing. And, and I'll, I'll start at the, at the beginning of this journey when we were tasked, can, can, can Qualcomm bring leadership back 
to the Windows ecosystem. That's our mission. And we did that. And I think, and I, as you said, I love to see the response, people changing roadmaps to, to try to do it. And, you know, and, and I have to say it, um, they need to try harder. It was not, <laughs> it was not sufficient. But, but, but the exciting thing is you were bringing innovation back to the, to the PC segment. You have not only the transition of now being faster than Macs, but you have the AI transition. And, uh, and I think we've seen a positive response. I think the enthusiasm we see from companies like Dell, HP, Lenovo, and, uh, and like I said, competition is good. And uh, it keeps the innovation, the technology roadmap forward. And one of the things we're gonna do we're not stopping here. So you guys need to book your ticket for <laughs> Snapdragon Summit next year because uh, third generation Orion is going to be awesome. Wait a second. Did I, did, did he talk about something? That, is he previewing something? I here? think he is. Yeah. We're I mean, sort of a new show. We kind of, Mostly yeah. analysis. Though. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, so Cristiano, uh, first of all, I couldn't agree more. Competition is a huge benefit for us as all consumers, right? And when you drive that, you know, you, you can change behavior, but you can address new things. Is it performance? Is it going to address the AI era? Are you addressing sustainability? By the way, the, the, the sort of diametrically opposed forces of AI and sustainability, a lot of opportunities there with what you can do on device and small models. And you talked about all that. I thought your speech was great and enjoyed your agent stuff. We'll, we'll come back to that later. Um, I want to talk about Orion for, for smartphone a bit. That was a big announcement. Uh, you know, you had a little fun out there. You did a few comparisons that were a little bit different. You, you know, compared a, 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 a handset device with a PC device out there. Uh, you didn't put anything in a freezer, but you talked a little bit about it. But talk about this Orion for smartphone announcement and why this is a great thing for the customers and, and, and partners. Yes. So, look, I know we talk about PC, but I think one of the main thing of, uh, of this show is, of course, that's where we always announce the latest and greatest Snapdragon 8. And this was the time that we apply our own custom CPU to Snapdragon 8 smartphone. And, uh, and there was that news in itself was a combination of not only we bring our custom CPU to Snapdragon 8, that's our now second generation Orion. And the, and the big thing is, this is the moment that we now restore the CPU leadership to the back to the Android ecosystem. So much so that we thought it's time to even change the name. It's going to be called now 8 Elite. And, and I think that's what we did. We announced 8 Elite. And I think that's very significant on, on that front, but also significant on becoming the platform that is going to enable, I think, one of the biggest change that we're going to see in mobile since the transition of feature phone to smartphone, which is going to be enabled by Gen AI. So the other thing about the 8 Elite beyond Orion is being the platform with an order of magnitude improvement in the ability to run uh, models, multi, uh, multi-modal uh, engines that is enabled this future, which we have conviction is going to change experience to all AI first experiences. So Cristiano, um, you brought the first Orion PC, you brought the second generation uh, to smartphones, and you also today, Nicole talked about bringing Orion to automotive, which you know you have a gigantic backlog. You're getting design wins left and right, and whether it's uh, communications, cockpit, and ADAS uh, SD. So, what is what does a brand new CPU bring to the table here? What part of the value proposition? Where you're helping your customers? Yes, and I want I want to make a comment about this, and of course, I'm very partial. I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very partial. I love Qualcomm. I think uh, Qualcomm has an incredible, uh, deep rooted engineering culture. And I am going to brag a little bit. We remember, we started doing our custom CPU. We added a new team to Qualcomm and look what we did in a very short period of time, very short period of time. We launched the first generation Orion NPCs. We created a second generation Orion. We launched it in mobile with like a 30% improvement after the first generation. And then we build Orion for automotive, which is now say automotive safety grade. If you actually look at many CPUs out there, many don't meet the requirements that you have for safety. We design a CPU with all the safety requirements, the step functions you need to take um, for automotive. All of this happened in a very short period of time. Right. And I think now to answer your question is, 
The announcement in automotive is probably one of the biggest and most powerful uh, SOCs we have ever built. And uh, it was a combination of trying to, same thing we did with phones, a combination of trying to bring Orion, our own custom CPU, uh, to this Snapdragon uh, Elite cockpit and the Snapdragon Elite ride from a performance and power is significant change. The other thing we did was significantly increase the NPU capability from one generation to the other, 12X. Mm. Like, it's not like 2X, it's like 12X. And why is that? It's because we believe that we're at the beginning of the software defined vehicle transition. And unlike a phone, we have to future proof the car. Right. The car doesn't, you know, I, people don't change cars every year uh, or every two years. But this is a time the car is going to get better over time because of GNI use cases, and we just need to have all the computing power out there. Yeah, and to that point, though, Cristiano, I do see that we're sort of entering this era of con continuous improvement and buy-in, right? Being able to update a car over the air, um, the fact that new software, new capabilities, new assistants and agents are going to create more demand later. So the there's like an elongated cycle, I think, for these devices that hasn't existed in the past, where it's kind of hardware generation, hardware generation. And you actually started the event with kind of this vision of yeah. how you see the world. By the way, we share this vision. You and I have talked about it kind of, you know, the new app economy is going to be like an agent economy in yes. some ways. And, you know, you've, you've talked a lot about openness and, and why openness in AI is, is so important. I'd love for you to share with our audience a totally new viewpoint, something we've never covered with Cristiano before at all. Kind of, how do you see all this, you know, evolving and why is openness so important? Yes, I, I will, you know, I will, I will start talking about this, this vision there that, uh, that we lay out um, you know, in the first part of the keynote. And I'm going to repeat to you guys what I said there. I have conviction. It's so clear now to us, which is we have constructs in our head because the smartphone is an incredible device. It's our inseparable device. We can get away from it. Our digital life runs on it. And we have this construct. We talk now about apps and app store and OS because of that transition. Actually, just to make my point, before the smartphone, we didn't talk about apps. We talked about programs. You can like bring a program yeah. uh, uh, to your computer. And I think that construct got created in this incredible smartphone revolution. But now, when you bring Gen AI, and yes, besides this model that know all, do all, that you're going to go inquiry in the cloud. There's another underlying function of Gen AI that a lot of people did not understand is you can understand human language. So if you understand human language, what you do, you put it at the, at the front end of the computer that's interfacing the human. And it doesn't matter if you talk, if you text, if you touch, uh, or even what, the, what you see. Right. The model now can decode what you said with your image understand it and respond. And what that's going to do is going to redefine what an app is. And I think that's this vision that we talk about. You're going to have an agent in your phone and this agent is going to understand what you're saying. And from that point in time, we'll take action. So the whole app experience is showing. It's like one of the things I show in the keynotes because people are going to say like, can you make this real for us? Not make it abstract. And I said, okay, let's say it's like a banking app because the last thing you think about innovation is your banking app and show how that's going to change. You're just going to ask information about your account. You're going to get it. And then you may be doing something else. You may, you may be buying something. You want to pay a bill and the agent is aware there and you do your banking stuff for you all the time. You deconstruct the app. It's not a. It's not like a, a well-defined, you go to the app, you do certain things. That function gets spread across everything you do. And that's what the agent's going to do. And I believe this future is going to start happening. And then it gets to the next part of your question. Those platforms are going are to change. And they're going to be open. And they need to remain open. I think PC is already there. You can install any model. You see now with our Copilot Plus PCs, a lot of the SaaS companies saying, I'm going to install a model in the machine and you can go download and install it. And we're going to see that desire happening on phones because I don't know what your choice is going to be. You may, for all of your social engagement and how you interact with other people, you may want the agent to come from Meta 
or you may want your productivity agent to come from Microsoft. You may want your, your navigation agent to come from Google. And it's going to be a whole new world and we want to be ready for. And what we want to do is what we're doing right now. We build the biggest platform that can run all of those agents without compromising battery life, make it open, available everyone, and let's see how the future holds. So at a minimum, we're looking at big disruption, disruption in the UI, the entire user experience. And quite frankly, if I look at the different players who intersect, uh, that could change as well. Very exciting. And it sounds like you are enabling everybody to be to take part in this revolution, whether it's on a smartphone, a PC, car, industrial edge. Absolutely. And, and, and look, and if you if you you know went to that first day of the Snapdragon Summit, you see that we're not alone. You see like uh, how some of the many companies that are the forefront of AI were just right there with us. You saw the video from Satya. You saw the video from Sam Altman. You saw the video from Mark Zuckerberg, and I think. We're, we're the beginning of the transition. Obviously, the question that everybody asks is gonna happen like next year. I don't know. I think, I think I can put a marker down. In five years, that's gonna be the norm. And we're all gonna be talking about those AI-centric experiences. That's how we're gonna live our lives. Between now and five years, I can't really get the, the angle, the trajectory, but something like that's gonna happen. Right, and, and they always say, Cristiano, kind of slow at first, then all at once. You won't necessarily see it, and then until you have that sort of LLM inflection, and all of a sudden it's totally pervasive and it changes your life. And Pat, in a perfect world, I would say, script me out, Pat, and it would find the right bot. It would arbit, you know, it would arbit the right uh, bot of me, and that would do this perfect exit. But Cristiano, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us at Snapdragon Summit. We'll book our tickets. We'll see you next year. I'm sure we'll talk quite a few times in between. Very good. Always a pleasure talking to both of you. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in, being part of the 6.5 community. We appreciate it very much. Check out all our coverage here at Snapdragon Summit. And of course, join our community and all of the coverage that Pat and I do across the industry and our team on the 6.5. But for now, we got to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.